Oh, man. Man, what a summer. How, how was yours? Did you make some new friends? Did you drink some orange juice? Hold hands with a chimp? No! Well, here, grab yourself a little glass of orange type pile and ease into the video. It's a cozy style day to talk about worms and placentas, don't you think? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you little scamp. I can't believe I've gone this far without mentioning one of my favorite nematodes, Placenta nema gigantissima. In the 1950s, a 28-foot nematode was described, one that lived up to his name by inhabiting the placenta of sperm whales, finding use in a very specific real estate that was both rich in nutrients and heavily protected from the outside world. So far, it is only the female worms that reach lengths of around 30 feet, as the males only seem to reach a modest 12 to 13 feet. It's the kind of dimorphism I can especially appreciate. Ahaha, <laughs> wink? Surprisingly, little is known about these cuties, as finding them is, as you can imagine, pretty difficult. What is often collected are small portions of dead worms, as they are quite thin despite their length, being more narrow than a pencil, no less. The original record included an image of a thin nematode in a glass specimen jar, described as the dubious sample. One of my entomology professors took a nematology course where his professor would fervently hunt for these mystical placenta worms. One professor, Magenti, of Davis, was known to excavate the carcasses of beached whales, hoping against the narrow odds for even a meager sample of Placenta nema gigantissima. It's not unlike looking for a 30-foot noodle in a haystack of complex flesh and hoping that the noodle was still intact. A noodle in a flesh stack, if you will. Magenti would have photos of himself and his crew next to a beached whale carcass, bloodied tools in hand, and covered in viscera, the aftermath of a gory excavation. His motivation was very understandable as, at the time, the only known specimens of placentanema were bits and pieces and one intact specimen owned by a Russian institution. Jim Jam's fun fact! Placenta Nema has 32 ovaries. <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea. The placenta worm isn't necessarily rare. It's just incredibly hard to study. We're not even certain how these cuties spread from whale to whale. The leading theory relies on the fact that whales are one of the few mammals who don't actively eat their expelled placentas. But you can bet other sea critters will. Many parasites occupy an intermediate host. That is, they have a stage in their life cycle that is spent in an entirely different organism than their primary target. It could be that placentanema eggs are laced throughout the afterbirth and whatever munches on it becomes an intermediate host. This seems likely, as sperm whales are pretty dang high on marine food chains. Oh, isn't that better? Orange juice in your system and placenta worms in your thoughts. Be sure to like a like and to share a share, and sneak this video into some retirement villages. I have a strong feeling that the elderly are a demographic my videos have yet to truly reach.